Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about surface piercings and more specifically, surface anchors. Now, a couple months ago, I got to do a super exciting piercing a septral for one of my coworkers, Tosh, and I posted a video here on YouTube that broke down what the piercing was, how it worked, had some clips of me actually performing it, and just was full of lots of good info. And y'all really, really loved that format for a video about piercing. So today, we're going to do that same thing. We're just talking about surface anchors. That does mean there is going to be a video of me performing a surface anchor in this video. There is a little bit of blood in that video, so this is just a fair warning that that is what to expect um, once we get to those clips. Now, the perfect starting point, what is a surface anchor? So a surface anchor is a type of surface piercing. It's also known as a single point piercing or a microdermal piercing. And this is really to just denote its difference from surface bars. So where surface bars are done with a piece of jewelry that's kind of shaped like a staple with two visible ends or decorative elements, a surface anchor is a single point piercing. So there's just a tiny base under the skin and there's one gem or adornment that sits on top of it. Surface anchors are what I wear in my forehead and around my eyes and they're super cute. Now, whenever I discuss surface work, specifically surface anchors, the biggest question folks always have is how does that even work? How does that even stay in the skin? And the answer to that is quite simple and it's actually directly in the name. So surface anchors work by there being a small anchor that sits within the surface layers of the skin and holds the piercing in place and holds the jewelry or the adornment in place. I'm gonna pop some diagrams up. Uh, this is my favorite diagram. It's the only thing that every single piercer in the whole wide world knows how to draw and we all draw it equally bad, so enjoy. Um, but essentially, a surface anchor base is pretty small. Think about like a single grain of rice or two grains of rice stuck together. These are not large. Um, and they're shaped kind of like a lopsided letter T. I like to describe it as like a shoe shape. You can see there's a longer side and there's a shorter side, kind of like shoes have a toe side and a heel side. And those two sides rest underneath the skin and hold everything in place. And then there's a tiny post, also known as a rise, that comes up from that base. And that's where the threading is. And then you can screw whatever gem or adornment or decorative piece that you want into that threading. And that's how they work. So that little base anchors things under the skin in the surface of the skin and then your gem or dormant is on it uh, and the reason why i like to emphasize that it's in the surface of your skin is because people will see anchors and i'll hear a lot of folks go oh my god is that in your bone like is that in your muscle um because a lot of folks just don't know they're just not aware so no these are very superficial piercings they only go through the most surface level of your skin honestly they pierce through less tissue than things like navels and nipples and tongues do. They're honestly, again, pretty superficial, all things considered when we talk about body piercings. Now, the second question people always ask once they see how surface anchors work and how the little base sits in the skin is always, how do you even do that? How does that even get in there? And the answer is with a piercing needle, like any other piercing. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to get into it. <laughs> um, so, before I play the clip, I'm going to explain kind of how this works. I think that gives some context to watching me perform one. Um, but I really love the shoe analogy when it comes to surface anchors. So think about having a shoe with the laces tied tight that you want to put on. You slide your toes in and then you stretch your heel down into the shoe. And that is basically exactly how surface anchors work. We create a small pocket underneath the skin with a tool, typically a piercing needle. Some people do use biopsy punches. And then we slide the toe side of the anchor in, and then we use the natural elasticity of the skin and we pop the heel side into its pocket. Worth mentioning that this is also how surface anchors are removed. So there's a very prevalent urban legend on the internet um, and floating around sometimes in real life that surface anchors have to be surgically removed, they have to be cut out of you. Um, it's complete and unfortunate misinformation. That is not the truth. They're designed, again, like a shoe. So if you have a shoe that you're wearing with the laces tight tight and you wanna take it off, you don't have to cut it off your foot. You just use the natural stretch and elasticity of the shoe to pop your heel out and then you slide your toe out and surface anchors work the same way. An experienced piercer uses the natural elasticity of the skin, we do a little massage, and then we just pop the heel out and slide the toe out. Most clients even say that removing them is easier than getting them pierced. 
Now, one thing you'll notice when you see me do surface anchors is that I prefer to do them with the needle technique. Um, there are some piercers who do them with biopsy punches. It's kind of personal preference. I personally find for me, much better results using needle technique. Um, I find that the surface anchors are more secure, they end up staying longer, I'm just happier with how they work. Um, and in a lot of states, biopsy punches are illegal for piercers to use, so in a lot of areas you simply can't access them. Um, so me personally, I prefer the needle method, um, and I've pierced a lot in states where biopsy punches were illegal, so even if I did prefer another method, it was not accessible to me in those states. So now that you know that we're making a little pocket and then we're just tucking things in, Let's take a peek at me performing a surface anchor. Body deep breath. And exhale. Keep breathing. You're doing God, you're good. So you're doing awesome. You're gonna feel that pressure while I go ahead and make those pockets. And then we're just gonna get that jewelry in. Good. that jewelry and so just breathe here through that pressure feeling and then breathe 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 and there we go I'm just gonna hold some pressure so as we do an anchor on my coworker Tasha's forehead, super smooth. Um, now watching an anchor be performed can be pretty intimidating um, because it does look like kind of a stressful or intimidating process. So a lot of folks' response is always, does that hurt? Um, so let's cut back to the clip. I'm just gonna hold some pressure. Mm -hmm. How's that? Good. That is better than the surface bar, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the surface bar didn't suck, but like I always prefer anchors. They're so easy. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like fucking anything. I like the iodine mustache. Thank you. Did you get that? Thank you. I have an iodine mustache and an iodine goatee. <laughs> the 90s in here. And also a fuckload of jewelry made by me. <laughs> Rob needed a cameo. I, <laughs> I love Rob's little cameo there. Um, but yes, Tosh found that to be super easy and I am inclined to agree. As someone who has had many surface anchors over the years, all over my body, um, I find that surface anchors are honestly really, really easy to get pierced. Um, now, obviously everyone's experience with piercings are different. Some folks do get surface anchors and find it to be pretty unpleasant. Uh, I will say the part of the body that you're getting it on can affect that. I find that the easiest anchors I've gotten are the ones on my face, so on my forehead, around my eyes, next to my ears, back of the neck, um, and even like upper chest and collarbone area tend to be really easy places to get an anchor. Um, fattier tissue areas like the lower back, um, and depending on your anatomy, your chest, can be a little bit more unpleasant to get anchors on from my professional and personal experience. But overall, I think surface anchors are really not that bad. Um, I would rather get a surface anchor than pretty much anything on my ears or nose, but I find ear and nose piercings to personally be pretty spicy. Um, but I think surface anchors are super easy. Um, so don't let the intimidation of what they look like being done stress you out about getting them. A really good piercer is gonna walk you through the process and make it really easy and really comfortable. Now, anytime we're talking about surface work, be it surface anchors or surface bars, there always needs to be a mention of the fact that these piercings are long-term temporary. So these are not permanent piercings. Surface anchors are not going to last you forever and ever and ever. I would say depending on the location and your anatomy and the jewelry you wear, a really good length of time to have a surface anchor is anywhere from one to five years. If you have it for one to five years, awesome, that's what I would expect. If you have it longer, amazing. Knock on wood, that's fantastic. Um, my forehead anchor and the ones around my eyes are personally going on six or seven years, and I'm very grateful that they are still in my face, but I know that that's not the reality. If you have them for less than a year, sometimes that's due to poor placement or poor jewelry and things like that. Sometimes it's also just due to luck. Um, I have had some clients who had the best jewelry, they've had perfect anatomy for it, they take really good care of it, and they're long-term temporary piercings. They were just never guaranteed to last forever to begin with. Um, and for anyone getting a surface anchor, your piercer should warn you about that at the beginning. They should tell you, hey, this is not a permanent piercing. You are not going to have this forever. Make sure you're okay with that. Make sure you're okay with the scar that this is going to leave and make sure you understand that going into it. 
And unfortunately, thanks to the influx of low quality piercers that are out there, I do encounter a lot of clients who have not been informed of this and are under the impression that their dermal or their surface anchor is going to be a forever piercing and then they're super bummed when it starts to reject and has to be removed. So please, anyone interested in surface stuff, it's long term temporary. Enjoy it while it lasts. Now healing for a surface anchor, honestly, pretty easy. Um, because of the way it's anchored in the skin, you wanna be really gentle when you're cleaning it. Um, a mistake I see a lot of people make is trying to get up under their jewelry really aggressively, um, and that can actually cause the jewelry to lift. So it's pretty gentle cleaning. All you really need is saline wound wash. These are very easy to clean. Um, I personally really like doing a warm compress with some clean gauze and saline. I find that that's the easiest for my clients to use to clean, or depending on your shower and your water pressure, letting water run over it, um, but it's very situational. So usually based on the client's anatomy, the location of the piercing, the type of top we're using on the anchor, I will actually tweak my aftercare for each of those situations. And that's part of why it's so important to be working with an experienced piercer who's going to be able to give you that advice and make those adjustments. Now, since surface anchors are long-term temporary, they are more fragile. So that does mean you need to be careful with what you do around them. I used to have a surface anchor in the center of my chest. I wore it for about five years before it had to come out. And the hardest part of that piercing was the fact that seat belts, necklaces, purses, necklines on shirts, clothing, straps, all could catch and snag that piercing very easily. So I had to constantly be super vigilant about what I wore, about what was coming in contact with that area of my body. It changed how I sat in my car, the purses I wore. Uh, it was a lot of work. When I got the piercing done, I wasn't necessarily thinking about all those things. I was just thinking about the piercing and how cute it was. And then I went home and I was like, oh, I can't wear most of my necklaces and like a ton of my shirts because they're just gonna snag right on this piercing. And that's something else that piercers should be honest with you about with surface anchors, especially depending on different placements, lower back placements, they should talk with you about pants and high waisted clothing, chest placements, they should talk with you about clothing, seat belts, purses, and placements around the face, they should talk to you about glasses, makeup, skincare, things like that. And a good reputable piercer is going to discuss all those things with you prior to piercing, let you know really exactly what you're signing up for and make sure that it's something that you understand everything that goes into. Now, another really big thing to address when it comes to surface anchors is that they are not possible to be done everywhere. So surface anchors work well in areas with low movement that are mostly stable, that are mostly gonna stay in the same position, and areas with a reasonable amount of tissue to do this piercing. We don't want the areas to be super, super thin, but we also don't want them to be super, super thick. What this means is that surface anchors are not a good idea anywhere on the legs or arms, and especially not on the hands and feet. If you'd like, I can do a whole video about the dangers of surface anchors in those placements, but as it stands, I do have a post on my blog about the risks of surface anchors in those areas, um, and it is just simply not worth it. So basically, if you're getting an anchor, you want to stick to your torso and your face. And through years of experience and experimentation and practice, we know that around the forehead and eyes, alongside the ears, back of the neck, collarbones, hips, and lower back are the areas that tend to do the best. Mid back and upper back tends to not stay, tends to reject very quickly, leaves lots of scarring. Um, clavicle right here, I see leave a lot of scarring to the point that I don't even offer that placement anymore because I see too many people end up with really severe scarring or it doesn't last them very long. So that's personally a placement I don't do just because of the movement of the head when you tilt it back um, and other areas of the face. So surface anchors are not really gonna work along your chin and on your cheeks. They're not gonna work on your lips or on your tongue. Remember, we want low movement areas. So while a lot of folks hear surface anchors and they think, oh, I'll get anchors in place of cheek piercings or in place of lip piercings, um, it really does not work the way you would expect because those are such high movement areas. They just end up migrating and when they are done there, they can leave some really, really awful scarring. I have seen anchors and cheeks leave worse scarring than full on cheek piercings have left. So please, those are not viable placements for these piercings. But surface anchors are really cool piercings. Um, I love that these are kind of, I feel like having a resurgence in popularity. They were super popular when they were first a thing and we were experimenting with them in the early 2000s. And we really quickly through that experimentation learned 
all of the drawbacks on anchors because there were a lot of piercers who were attempting these big fancy projects with anchors um, and they were rejecting and leaving clients with a lot of really severe scarring and unfortunately as a byproduct of that anchors got a pretty bad reputation for quite a few years and folks were really hesitant to get them which I totally understand after seeing a lot of failure and a lot of problems with them in the early 2000s. But now we as piercers know a lot more about anchors. We understand their temporary nature. We understand what parts of the body we can place them on and have them be viable versus what we can't. Um, and seeing a piercer who's going to be responsible, who's going to warn you of all those things and do anchors only in placements that are going to have the best chance of healing and lasting and the least risk of scarring and who's going to be honest with you that they are temporary and the effects that they'll have. Anchors can have a lot of success and we're seeing them grow in popularity recently, which for me, as someone who wears a bunch of anchors, I'm super stoked on. I think these piercings are so cool, they're so fun. Even if they are temporary, I really enjoy them for the time that they last. And for me, they tend to be relatively low maintenance piercings. Again, the healing tends to be a little bit easier. They heal in about three to five months, which is a breath of fresh air if you've ever spent a year or more healing a cartilage piercing. Three to five months is nothing in comparison to so many ear piercings that we get all the time. And despite the fact that watching them done or hearing about the, how they're done with the pocket can seem intimidating, I really do think they're genuinely like pretty easy piercings to get done. They feel like some uncomfortable pressure, but it's truly not the end of the world. So if you've been thinking about a surface anchor, I say go for it. Just go for it safely. Obviously, make sure you're researching and seeing a reputable piercer. Understand that it's going to be temporary. You're not going to have it forever. Love it for while it lasts. And understand that there's limitations in placements. Do not get surface anchors on arms or legs, hands or feet. And if you are doing them on your torso or your face, stick to placements that we know are viable and are going to last and aren't going to leave you with a ton of scarring. So that was my kind of like brief overview of surface anchors and a nice chance to see me doing one. If you like this video and would like to see me do a video about what placements don't work for surface anchors and why they don't work there, uh, let me know in the comments because I think that could be a really good follow up to this one. And as per usual, if you like my content and you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and I'm sure we will hang out and chat soon. <laughs> Bye!